Rochester, Minnesota. As you are all aware, um, the survival of patients with multiple myeloma has significantly improved over the past decade. The landscape uh, for the therapy of this disease has dramatically changed as a result of introduction of several highly effective and uh, well-tolerated drugs during this past 10 years. Now, patients with myeloma are living longer with better quality of life, and I think the attention has started turning towards trying to develop regimens which are highly effective, but at the same time are better tolerated and are least intrusive to their normal lifestyle. And it is in the, that context that I would like to present the results of the MLN9708, which is the first pro oral, oral proteasome inhibitor that is going through clinical development and is at the most advanced stage at this time. Now, while retaining some of the similarities with the very familiar Velcade, it does have distinct physiochemical properties uh, from that drug. Now, this oral proteasome inhibitor is being evaluated as a single agent in patients with relapsed multiple myeloma in different um, uh, dose schedules as, as well as in patients with newly diagnosed disease. Now the initial phase one trials that have been done with this drug in the relapse setting have shown that this drug has activity in this disease. And so far, the toxicity profile that we have seen with this drug in the relapse setting suggests a very favorable uh, profile. Now one of the most commonly used regimens for initial treatment of patients with multiple myeloma is the combination of the proteasome inhibitor Velcade along with the immunomodulatory drug uh, lenalidomide or Revlimid along with dexamethasone. Now the combination has shown significant synergy both in the preclinical studies and this has been borne out in the, F the studies that have been done in the clinic. Now, given the uh, activity and the toxicity profile of MLN9708, the logical next question was to see if we can combine that with Revlimid and dexamethasone to develop a well-tolerated, but at the same time, a highly effective regimen. So we set out uh, the design of the study to develop a uh, effective, safe, and convenient all oral regimen for initial treatment of multiple myeloma. So the study had two phases. The phase one study was designed to uh, determine the maximally tolerated dose of MLN9708 that can be combined with lenalidomide and dexamethasone. This was followed by a phase two study that was designed to assess the efficacy of this combination in this disease in the initial treatment, as well as uh, the, um, the toxicity associated with this therapy. So patients with newly diagnosed multiple myeloma who had adequate hematological function and organ function with good performance status were enrolled on this clinical trial. Patients were enrolled irrespective of their age or their eligibility to undergo stem cell transplant. Now the study design is as shown in the slide here. The MLN9708 was given as a um, pill um, on days 1, 8, 15, that is weekly for the first three weeks out of the four week cycle. Lenalidomide was given at 25 milligrams once a day for the first three weeks of the four-week cycle, which is the current standard schedule for this drug. And dexamethasone was given at 40 milligrams days 1, 8, and, uh, 15, and 22, which is basically weekly. Patients were treated for up to 12 uh, four-week cycles, followed by a maintenance phase that consisted only of the MLN 9708 given weekly for three out of four weeks. And this was uh, continued till disease progression or unacceptable toxicity. Now, the phase one study enrolled patients um, over a one-year period between November uh, and October of 2011. Um, there were 15 patients. Um, this subsequent phase two study rapidly enrolled 50 patients between October of last year and February of this year. So the, uh, what we found out from this study was the maximally tolerated dose of this medication was 2.97 milligram per meter square, uh, given uh, weekly for three out of four weeks. Um, we uh, proceeded to the phase two dose using the one dose level lower than that at the 2.23 milligram per meter square uh, because we wanted to have a regimen that can be uh, sustained long term in these patients with newly diagnosed disease. Now, as you can see here, the median number of cycles of therapy that have been administered so far is around six, suggesting that we are still early on uh, in terms of the, um, the treatment, um, cons considering that the target was 12 cycles of therapy. Uh, nearly half of the patients still remain on therapy at this time um, out of the phase two um, population. And um, we did allow patients to have stem cells collected at the end of three cycles of therapy, considering that the stem cell transplant still constitutes an, in, an important part of the therapy of patients with multiple myeloma. There were 20 patients in whom stem cell transplant was attempted, and there, was no, there were no difficulties encountered in terms of being able to collect adequate stem cells to proceed to a stem cell transplant. 
Now, what is shown here is the, uh, the response rates that we have seen with this uh, combination. On the left-hand side, we see the overall response rate that was seen in almost 90% of these patients, which included um, all the patients in the phase two dose. This included 58% of the patients who had a very good partial response and nearly a quarter of the patients who had a complete response. What is also interesting is um, if you look at the 47 patients who have undergone four cycles of therapy and the 19 who have received eight cycles of therapy, we do see a deepening response with the increase in the complete response rate and the very good partial response rate. And in only three patients who have actually undergone uh, 12 cycles of therapy, um, two of them had a very good uh, partial, um, three, two of them had a complete response and one had a very good partial response, all pointing towards um, the likelihood of this response rate increasing with time as patients complete all the designated therapy. Now, clearly, the side effects are important. Um, uh, one of the things that is uh, conspicuously absent in this trial, but um, considering the results that we have seen with the WellCare combination, was the peripheral neuropathy. Even though uh, a third of the patients had um, peripheral neuropathy, the majority of the peripheral neuropathy seen was grade one, that was the 20%. Uh, grade two neuropathy was seen in six patients, and grade three neuropathy was seen in only two patients. The most common side effects that we encountered were gastrointestinal, uh, with nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea, some skin rash, and uh, fatigue. Overall, serious adverse events were seen in around 20% of the patients. But what is uh, important is that most of the side effects were well manageable with either dose reductions or other symptomatic therapy for the nausea and diarrhea. So I think in conclusion, this all oral uh, regimen of MLN9708, lenalidomide and dexamethasone is a well-tolerated uh, regimen for initial therapy of multiple myeloma with very limited neuropathy side effect. The results show this regimen to be very active, with over 90% of the patients achieving a partial response, and at the median um, of six cycles of therapy, with a very good partial response of 55%, and a complete response rate in nearly a fourth of the patients. We expect these numbers to go up as the patients continue on therapy. Based on these uh, results, um, we are proceeding with a two phase three trials, one that is already enrolling uh, patients with relapsed disease, looking at this combination in comparison to lenalidomide and dexamethasone. A, another phase three trial targeting patients with newly diagnosed multiple myeloma should be opening up in the next few months. Again, comparing the combination of MLN9708, uh, lenalidomide, and dexamethasone with the lenalidomide-dexamethasone combination. Thank you for your attention.